guys, it's the Secret Stash Bros here again. So as you saw in the opener, we're not making anything necessarily with a secret compartment, but we're making a switchblade. Which is gonna be hiding in a secret spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is probably gonna be one of our more higher technical builds, so I'm gonna really try hard in the voiceover to try and explain what's going on. And just like last time, see if you guys can find the red lion. Let's go build it. Perfect. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how much of a pain in the neck this knife was to make. Because we didn't have any building plans or blueprints to go off of, we found a video online that we'll link down below that kind of showed us how it worked. So we were just going off of what we saw and then had to come up with all the measurements on our own. I wouldn't recommend using the dimensions in the pictures above as this was really early on in our build and we weren't exactly sure what all our measurements needed to be. So this is just to give you an idea of what the whole thing is supposed to look like. Keep in mind that almost this entire thing is going to be made out of wood. So we actually had to make the knife portion a lot bigger and clunkier than a metal version would be because wood has limitations. So some things might look bigger than they need to be, but it's because we're making it out of wood and wood breaks a lot easier than metal. So first off, we had to make our double action or engine to the knife. And over the course of a week, we had to remake this piece about four different times. We made the engine out of a sturdy piece of 3 8 plywood. It needs to be stiff and strong because this is going to get some abuse over time. Here in these clips, we're just cutting out our layout with our scroll saw. That thin groove that you see is cutting down the middle of the board is where a bolt is going to be sliding back and forth that's going to be attached to our blade. The two end boxes there are going to house our springs, and it's important to make sure that these boxes are cut to the exact width and length of your springs. I have to make some metal flanges that are going to be the stops for the blade when it comes in and out. I think wood would break if we just used wood. So we're gonna make some metal flanges and I'll show you where these go. The reason we made these flanges out of metal is because they're going to get the bulk of the force when we're using the springs to launch our blade. One thing to keep in mind when you're making these flanges is that you want the width of them to be equal to that of your spring. This will help prevent any side to side or up and down motion from your spring when it's sitting inside the alcove that you cut out earlier. Even though in these clips you'll see us using a hacksaw to make them and cut the grooves, we found out that it's much easier to make these if you use a die grinder to cut the grooves. On these pieces here, we actually forgot to put the little tab on the back, but we fixed it in our later models. Okay, so this thing, our launcher cracked. While Dad is going to be making a new one, I'm going to pick out the wood for our staff. It's actually pretty cool. Let's go grab it. Something cool that happened to us a, while, a little while ago is one of our friends, shout out to Todd, thank you Todd, he gave us a bunch of his old hemlock barn wood. This is what we're going to be making the staff out of. We're going to glue a bunch of these together and then we're going to spoke shave the whole thing to get it nice down to more staff like size. Being that this wood was part of a barn and sitting in a barn, uh, it's got some bird poo on it. That's nasty. Since this is some old barn wood, we gotta make sure there's no nails in it. At this point in the project, we had no idea how long our knife was gonna be. So we just cut the boards to some rough dimensions, about four inches wide by 60 inches long. Our two middle boards, however, were actually cut about a foot and a half short so that we could make the insert for our knife later on. Time to get all that nasty bird peel off it. So after dad finished rebuilding our second engine, he had to go through and chisel out some slots for our flanges. When you're chiseling these out, it's important to make sure that their depth is to the exact depth of your flanges. Otherwise when you go to put your top on, when you pull the spring back, there'll be too much room for the flange to flex up and you won't get a nice launching action from your spring. After you have your main engine built, you have to make your blade. Our blade was made out of Patagonian rosewood, which has a Yanka scale rating of 3,840 pounds. Just for a comparison, Maplewood has a Yanka rating of 1,450 pounds. 
Just to show you guys how dense this stuff really is, check this out. Right to the bottom. Definitely don't want to make a boat out of that stuff. When you're making your launch pad, it's important to make sure that you leave enough room on your base for the rails to go on the sides. The eight rails that are going to go on the sides of your knife are actually going to help guide your launcher and your blade in going forwards. We cut our four bottom rails to a thickness of about a quarter inch and our four top rails to a thickness of about an eighth of an inch. This is why you want to make your blade before you make your launch pad. What you need to do is take your blade and put it in the center of your board where you want it to go back and forth. Then take your four quarter inch pieces that you made earlier and glue them to the board right next to where your blade is going to go. These things have to be extremely close to your blade, so much that there's no play going back and forth between the blades and the side rails. Same goes for your top rails. These are going to get glued on next to your launcher, and again, they have to be really close. Once you've got your rails in place, you can then move on to putting the angle cuts in your launcher. These can be very finicky, however, as where they need to be cut and placed is very specific to where your locks are going to sit. So just be ready to do a lot of sanding and small adjustments so that they start working right in the future. Now before you can make your locks for your blade, you actually have to put a bolt at the back end of your blade. This will be the point of energy transfer from your flings and spring right into the blade so that it goes back and forth. Once you've got that done, you'll need to mark exactly on your blade where it meets the corners of your guide. Then put two small notches on each side of your blade, one at the back and one a little bit farther up but still towards the back. The locks we made were basically just small maple shims. We sanded the ends of them down so that they'd have more spring in them when they were next to our launcher. When you're securing these locks to your launching pad, make sure that they are completely touching the back of your notches. If there's no tension on them, your blade won't stop and it won't be stiff when it's sticking out of your handle. Unfortunately, this is where I have to stop part one of our build. There's still a lot more to go, so I didn't want to try and cram it all into one video. Um, but if you're going to try this yourself, there's going to be a lot of sanding like you see here, a lot of grinding, and a lot of fiddling. Just because everything is so finicky and it's not held down by really screws or nuts or anything. One of our goals for this project is to try and keep it as thin as possible, but we're not sure if it actually is possible. Because everything's made out of wood, we have to make our handle a lot bigger than it needs to be to accommodate our blade. At the time of this voice recording, I'm not really sure how this thing is going to look or turn out, but hopefully it won't look like this.